So um, we have an intimate group today. Um, people get busy and drop in and out of these things for sure. So with no further ado, um, McLaren Lata has been actively involved with the Sustainable Destination Leadership Network and Sustainable Travel National for some time. And officially, she is the Vice President of Consumer Insights at Mercury CSC, which is headquartered in lovely Bozeman, Montana. Um, just a, a bit on Mercury CSC, their expertise is connecting brands to people who value travel, outdoors, and sense of place. And McLaren um, is a leading expert in connecting brands with consumers who are passionate about travel and the outdoors. Um, as the Vice President of Consumer Insights, uh, Mercury CSC, an award-winning integrated communications agency, has created Think 2 Plus O Forum, sorry if I said that right, a forum of 1,000 hand-picked experienced seekers from across the world. Their opinions and insights help her identify trends, strategies, and effective marketing for travel and outdoor brands. By leveraging consumer perspectives and current trends, McLaren's work influences organizational changes, converge media plans, and creative messaging, helping clients achieve their business and marketing goals. Brands that have utilized McLaren's insights to connect with their desired audiences include the Montana Office of Tourism, of course, Sustainable Travel International, the Wilderness Society, AAA Mountain West, the Jude Ranchers Association, and the Travel and Adventure Show, and much more. Prior to joining Mercury CSC in 2008, McLaren was a member of the leadership team at Carmichael Lynch Song, a Minneapolis-based firm recognized as Mid-Size Agency of the Year by PR Week. Her accounts include, included Maytag, American Standard, and Red Essen Hotels and Resorts. McLaren is a graduate of the University of Colorado, studied international marketing in Toulon, France, and has a degree in economics and a minor in French. We. Oui. <laughs> um, great. Well, thank you so much, McLaren. And um, we're really, really happy that you can join us. And I'm looking forward to hearing about um, what you'd like to share as well. And hopefully we have um, an intimate but engaged audience for you today. So thank you. Well, Thanks. I, I have to say, you know, I couldn't control the internet this morning, and my apologies. Thank you for you um, that all stayed on and logged back in and did it all. So thank you. You are um, definitely get A's for perseverance this, the, today. So yesterday I was checking emails on my phone, and an email from jetsetter.com caught my eye. The subject line said, the world's first virtual reality hotel, only on Jet Setter. And I thought, wow, this will be great to share during the webinar. Travel has become so incredibly sustainable that they've created a way to do it virtually, right? But as soon as I had that thought, I remembered that it was April Fool's Day. And maybe, just maybe, Jet Setter was pulling a prank on me. So sure enough, I went to the website, clicked on the offer, and started to look for some obvious clues. And they did a really good job, but it did become evident that indeed it was really a prank. So as cool as a virtual reality hotel might be, I have to say that I'm glad it was really only a prank because travel wouldn't quite be the same without leaving your office or home. So, so anyway, I don't know if any of you saw that, but I sure thought it was a good, a good prank. Today I'm gonna to talk about um, some global consumer trends that are indeed real. Um, and how they relate to sustainability. And frankly, I don't think this comes as much a surprise for any of us, but more and more general consumer trends are pointing to new and enriched opportunities for those of us who are committed to sustainability and everything that might evolve. So trend watching is one of my favorite sources of go-to information, and they've spent quite a bit of time exploring two trends that are very much intertwined. The first trend is this idea of brand sacrifice, consumers wanting brands to make sacrifices for them. And that's based on another trend that they've identified, this idea of guilt-free consumption. And it's that consumers don't want to experience any guilt on the choices they make, whether it's guilt about potential negative impacts on themselves, society, or the planet. And what I also think is really interesting is that Euromonitor International is reinforcing these ideas in their latest um, top 10 global consumer trends for 2015, talking about consumers, consumers being driven by the heart, which is leading to cause-linked buying, a thriving sharing economy, 
and can-do attitudes. And all of this, I think, is really fantastic news for sustainability and sustainable travel. They also, China Watching just highlighted that in material affluent societies where basic needs are easily met, human motivation quickly shifts away from what I have to who I am. But interestingly enough, and I think we're all seeing this in you know, our day-to-day -day lives as well as our professional lives, there's this tension between who I am and who I would like to be. Trend watching recommends that brands look at solutions that combine new technologies with a deep understanding of human behavior and resolve this tension by helping customers become the people they want to be. And when you think about travel, travel is a means to escape that every day and become someone who you aren't. Here's a screen grab from the Brando website. It's an extreme example of the trend I just talked about. Brands being responsible for making the world a better place, consumers wanting consumption and indulgence without guilt, cause-linked buying, and the tension that consumers feel between, again, who I am and who I'd like to be. Essentially, the Brando in French Polynesia is the legacy of actor Marlon Brando. It's a new eco-resort. I don't know if any of you have heard about it. If you've been, I want to hear stories. <laughs> but it's allegedly as sustainable as it is luxurious. The cost per night is around 3,000 US dollars, but if you read the reviews on TripAdvisor, you're gonna to wanna to figure out a way to, how to make this happen. It just sounds that fantastic. And take a chance, um, take a moment, and um, not right now, but um, Google this, uh, or not Google it, but look it up on TripAdvisor, and you'll see that most of the reviews focus on the experience, there are some that allude to the sustainability aspect of it, um, but it's in a really, really compelling way. And I, I thought some of the language that was used uh, by consumers, by people who have actually been to the resort, um, was really interesting. And, and I think a good learning opportunity um, for those of us in the sustainability industry and um, passionate about how that relates to travel. So, and when you book your host stay at the Brando, be sure to bring me along because it looks pretty fantastic. Thanks to the web, not only can we research any kind of experience like the Brando, read other people's opinions on $3,000 a night US dollar lodging properties, but we're also speeding up the transfer of knowledge. This is a great quote from JWT Intelligence. The result, is that consumers are increasingly confident and expect brands to work around them rather than dictate to them. They also summarize it all pretty nicely as a given, not a bonus. Brands are expected to deliver experiences, be hyper-transparent, and achieve sustainability. And this comes from the Future 100 um, trends and change to watch in 2015 that just recently came out. And although this is an earth-shattering news, it reinforces and is very much in alignment with what those of you who are committed to sustainability are trying to achieve. One example, and I think it's really quite um, fascinating, and Jeremy, Jeremy and I were talking about this, um, is uh, how companies in the web are helping consumers around the world drive change and demand sustainability. There's this recent campaign, I don't know if any of you have heard of it, um, initiated by Nordic Comfort Hotel and the Rainforest Foundation Norway. And this campaign goal is to push TripAdvisor to add sustainability as a rating choice in the same way that users rate service, food, value, atmosphere, you know, all the things that TripAdvisor currently has. And this it, this campaign has a really dynamic and well-designed website. Take a look, check it out. Um, very compelling short video and a petition that you can sign right there. More than 5,000 people have signed the petition. And a recent article in skift.com um, that highlighted the campaign says that TripAdvisor doesn't plan on adding a sustainability bubble rating Instead, it's focusing on its existing um, Green Leaders program. But it'll be interesting to see if this, uh, if this campaign gains more momentum. And you know, what a fantastic opportunity to 
put sustainability at the forefront in a consumer-driven way, a consumer-rated way on TripAdvisor, which we all know sees such a tremendous amount of website traffic. So all of this globalization and technology has also been a boon to the travel industry, especially to those committed to a more experiential travel experience, um, as noted by Jamie Wong of Viable. Um, it, this is a quote that came from the rise of experiential travel put out by Skift in June. Be because they want unique experiences, this can also be really challenging. If you consider that there are parts of the travel industry over the past 30 years that have heavily invested in a homogenized experience. The very thing that we see that today's traveler is trying to escape. So it's no surprise, and I'm sure many of you have seen this, for example, that some of the major hotel chains are trying new things, looking to be more about the local experience rather than just everything consistent and you couldn't tell whether you were in New York City or Berlin or whatever it might or wherever place you might be across the globe. And this reinforce, reinforces what DMAI reported in July about the top trends impacting DMOs across the world. So four of the top trends are all pointing to what we see as quote unquote experiential travel and that becoming more and more part of the mainstream travel trends. I think this is really, really exciting and um, has definitely caught our eye. I'm sure you also have all seen this, but it's important to note that quantifying the impact of protected areas has gained new traction as of late and demonstrates that visiting areas that are a result of local or regional or national commitments to sustainability is very much part of the travel experience and is also big business generating 600 billion US dollars in direct in-country expenditures. Also, just as we're seeing tensions among consumers about who I am versus who I would like to be, we're also seeing new tensions among experiential tra travelers. And as Julie mentioned, Mercury has its own Think TNO forum a panel of individuals who are passionate about travel, outdoors, and sense of place. And we tapped them and asked them, about, asked them about their feelings. And recently we asked them about their feelings about connectivity and how that, experience, how that impacts their experiences. So what's really interesting is that this is an audience that thrives on immersing themselves in the moment and seeking truly authentic experiences. But at the same time, they're struggling with disconnecting from their commitments and putting down their phones. And what we're seeing is that struggle is deriving from the prevalence of mobile devices, they're everywhere, the human brain's desire for dopamine and fundamental need for habitual behavior. So because we pick up that phone and we're getting dings and texts and you know, emails, we get, we get addicted to that. We also have become really customized to the safety and conveniences of being connected. And then to the cultural pressures, you know, this idea that, oh, you, you're still reachable no matter where you are. So it's been really interesting to see that love-hate relationship um, and how, you know, how people are trying to address that. So now I want to take a moment and share, many of you had a chance to um, share your observations in that quick three question survey we sent out um, prior to today uh, about the trends you're seeing related to sustainability. And um, grab your reading glasses, I, I know I need to, but I wanted to include all of them up here. Um, I think this is a pretty fantastic list. Take a moment and look through it. And let me know if you have anything to add here or anything that anyone wants to elaborate on that they might have shared or asked each other about. Any thoughts here? McLaren, um, 
One of our participants, Miguel, asked if you could just reframe the question that we responded to in this one. This is a great list, though. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, what was the question? What consumer or brand trends have you noticed recently that are related to sustainability? So we saw sharing economy, and you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that today, but I think that's definitely you know, a huge aspect. I also think that you know, all of these um, interesting observations about um, local food, whether it's organic, whether it's seasonal, um, culinary travel, uh, also local brew pubs, whiskey, I think that's you know, all becoming part of these trends that are related to sustainability. Um, just, I think, some really great observations that you all shared. All right, well, I have to say, to summarize this, when I look at that list, it reinforces this quote that I already shared with you from your monitor international. You know, consumers are being driven by the heart, and that's resulting in cause-linked buying, a thriving sharing economy, and can-do attitudes. And I, I think that's really relevant to all the ideas that you shared and, and summarizes it nicely. So when you think about, I want to share Karen. with you. Yes. Yeah, I just, it, yeah, I, I think that's interesting, Jamie, here, that you suggest that, that people are focused on uh, the impact based on their heart, but do you know, or if you look at that list, you also not think that there's a certain amount of head there as well, because they're looking at it and realizing that, you know, we only have one planet and we're sort of, you know, overwhelming it, and if we don't do something about that, that's our, in our own best interests to actually do something about it. Yes, for sure, but I think even with the head, it comes, you know, the heart starts and then the head follows is what we typically see. Um, for us here um, in the U.S., you know, we've had some really shocking weather patterns um, over this winter. And from what I'm hearing, you know, people are scared, people are frightened, people are, you know, it's, there's, they're starting to say, oh my gosh, this is real. And so, you know, again, it's not like, oh, you know, there are six feet of snow in Boston, that's really unusual. It's more like, wow, you know, how is this impact, you know, it becomes, it becomes that heart first and then the head. And I think that's, you know, what we're seeing, this combination of both. Does that make sense? Sure. But yes, I mean, for sure. I mean, I think there, there's definitely um, some great, uh, great smart choices that are being made here. I mean, I, you know, the detailed labeling, the free and clear labeling, you know, that's, you know, that's definitely getting to the head, too. So in terms of three key takeaways for today, um, when I was having technical difficulties, Julie might have mentioned that you know, we're going to keep this nice, short, and sweet um, chance for questions, but just also, to an opportunity to you know, have a quick kind of gut check of like, OK, what's, you know, what's important? What are we seeing? How can you take this um, and it be beneficial to what you're doing? So three, um, three key takeaways. Um, first one, make meaningful sacrifices to allay consumer guilt. Brands that are making these kinds of sacrifices for the consumers are going to succeed. And if those sacrifices aren't real, or if they are real, more importantly, it's going to be easier for the brands to tell those stories to their consumers in a way that is transparent that doesn't seem self-serving, and that becomes worthy enough for consumers to talk about it through their social channels. One example um, that trend watching has shared, and I think it's a great one, is um, Tesla. Is, you know, they're not enforcing its patents because they want to share the technology for the betterment of all. So what's great is that if you do something that is really truly you know, a, uh, considered a sacrifice, then you get people talking about that, which ta takes advantage of the second key takeaway. More than ever, consumers have the ability to demonstrate personal empowerment. 
We're seeing this with change.org, GoFundMe, um, people putting together their own um, crowdsourcing, whatever it might be, you know, looking for others to help support them, complete strangers. And they're completely uninhibited. There's nothing holding them back. If you haven't read this story, it, um, it's a really fantastic example. Um, this is a story about Matt Stapera, an American who writes for BuzzFeed. Matt had his iPhone stolen, posted a story about it, became a celebrity in China because of the story he posted, ended up traveling to China to meet the man who ended up with his stolen iPhone, who now has the nickname Brother Orange, and spent more than a week with him in which they're accompanied by photographers wherever they go. Matt ends up like endorsing um, different products um, because they're doing you know, press conferences. They end up bringing a lot of fame to Brother Orange's home city. And now their story is going to be made into a documentary. Google Matt Stapera and Brother Orange if you haven't read it. It's pretty amazing and gives examples of how brands took the opportunity to be part of this story. And by the way, Matt posted the story of his iPhone being stolen less than two months ago. And all this has transpired since then. So again, you know, there, there's, there's no inhibitions, you know, there's, right, they're, they're, unhi they're, unhib they're uninhibited and, 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 in, and totally self-empowered. The third key and final key takeaway I want to share with you is that travel brands that can help consumers balance that tension between reality and their projected perfectness, whether it's being immersed in the experience, even though they can't put their smartphones down, or helping circumnavigate the reality of who they are and who they want to be, those brands will be highly appreciated by consumers. So, this image is going to, you know, throw a little wrench in the day because Las Vegas, I think, is the antithesis of sustainability. But here is the best of Las Vegas telling people where are the great places to get selfies in Las Vegas. And um, I saw an example of this the other day that was shared with me, um, and I can't remember what specific um, destination it was, but they actually have a sign up and a, uh, a a square outlined on the sidewalk, you know, stand here for the best selfie or the best picture of whatever, you know, icon that was in the background. You know, so that's a way that brands are, you know, interjecting themselves with helping consumers really um, kind of project their perfectness. So we've come nowhere in 160 years? <laughs> Because that's what Thomas Cook did on the first mass tourism trip that he ran from Manchester to the Lake District. Exactly. He, had, he painted white squares in the lakes and said, get your compass out and look in this direction, and that's what photo you should take. Exactly. What's old is new again, right? And so the difference between that and now is that that image goes, you know, you post that online, and that image is seen by the world within seconds, right? You don't have to wait for years or, you know, um, I remember in, uh, when I was growing up, you know, the family slideshow, you had to get together and go to Aunt Sue's house and see the big family slideshow. Right now it's happening, you know, instantaneously. So again, yeah, I agree, absolutely, Jamie. What's, what's old is new again, you know, and the ideas don't really change, it's just how they're being consumed. So with that, um, the other question that was asked in um, the survey um, that we sent out to everyone was list up to six sources of sustainability related information or research that you know or use in your work. And so we compiled all of these um, suggestions that you used um, and put them together on one side. And we can send this out to everyone because I think it's a great list. By the way, I love the person, and, and we did, this was all anonymous, but the person who said anything from Australia, I thought that was fantastic. Um, just because of the, they noted because of the quality 
um, of the research they find to be um, really, um, really above par. So um, great resources here. Um, I don't know if there's anything um, else that anyone else wants to add. Um, a couple people also noted um, specific reports um, from TripAdvisor, their um, report on green leaders um, from JetBlue, uh, talking about um, coral reefs. Um, another thing that was mentioned was uh, Google Alerts, as well as web searches. All right, we'll be sure to share that with everyone. And then I also want to include my list of favorites of where I like to go to for global consumer trends. Um, I talked about trend watching today. Uh, PSFK is another favorite of mine. Um, Skift, I think, is great. Um, I think they really have done a great job of looking at information and synthesizing it down. Euromonitor International, I also mentioned. Google Alerts, you know, I have several, multiple Google Alerts set up um, around different terms related to sustainability, eco-travel, adventure travel, experiential travel. JWT Intelligence, I mentioned. And then two, The Economist, we're seeing a lot of um, interesting articles from The Economist. Uh, not too long ago, there was a great piece, I think, well, it might have even been a year ago, on the sharing economy in The Economist, and I'm sure there's a lot of, uh, of you who um, use all those resources, too. So with that, if, you know, if there are any specific questions that you want to talk about or any ideas or any thoughts that this generates, throw them out there. And, um, but I just, as I said, wanted to keep it nice and short and sweet, and I apologize again for those um, technical difficulties. Thanks, McLaren. This is, this is really interesting. This is Julie here, for those of you that don't recognize my voice. Um, and, I, and I actually, it's, it's really valuable to kind of see what um, other folks are seeing as, as the trends in, in, in branding um, messaging points, but also um, where people are getting their research. I think that's, that, that's ex extremely helpful to me. Um, I have one question to kind of kick it off and then I would love to have others, others jump in. Um, so I'm pretty familiar with the whole LOHAS dialogue and you know, the past convening of folks for an annual conference, um, a forum that typically happened in Boulder, Colorado, which is near where I live. And you know, that is, that is since um, kind of got off to the sidelines, and I'm just kind of wondering, you know, based on that, that framing, it looks like a lot of what you're talking about fits into that consumer, that previously labored consumer group, and I was just kind of wondering where, where this all plays into the dialogue now, and if even that, if people are speaking kind of to that LOAS, you know, um, consumer group as well. Well, my thought here is that we're seeing whatever you want to call it, right? However you want to label it, we're seeing this interest in sustainability, interest in the low cost lifestyle being more and more part of the mainstream. And uh, I think that's just a really, you know, there, there are so many different reasons why that's happening. Uh, I think we all have a greater global awareness uh, you know, as I mentioned in one of the slides, we're seeing a huge transformation of information. I mean, the speed at which that information is being shared is pretty um, fantastic. And we're becoming smarter and, you know, and also things are becoming more visual, right? Uh, as Jamie was talking about, there was, um, you know, you, you, you take you take uh, photos, and those photos are shared instantaneously, and uh, it becomes more and more visually compelling. So I think there's so much storytelling happening, um, and in positive ways, that we're seeing such a, you know, there's the, the world is getting smaller and smaller, and with the world getting smaller and smaller, and information being transferred um, at a higher and higher rate, 
it's the lines are becoming blurred as to you know what is sustainability, what is LOHAS, what is whatever it might be. Um, it's becoming just you know just good common sense. I, that's you know that's a thought, uh, and I'd love to hear what others have to say about that too. Hi, this is Jamie. I, I, I think, you know, I certainly see where you're coming from there. I, I guess my sense is that there's a craving for this kind of stuff, um, but the, yeah, the, 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 the sort of, I guess the radar, if you will, of, of, um, of, of genuineness is at a level we've never seen before. You can't just be doing this because you're trying to, you know, create some sort of a you know, social uh, social network buzz or something like that. It, it it's got to sort of happen in a very genuine way, and you know the way our boss talks about it is you know if we do the right thing, you know, good things will follow. Um, uh, rather than trying to look at it from a marketing perspective, where we're going to try and create this buzz, let's create this campaign. I'm seeing that more often than not, those engineered things aren't the ones that get sticky and, and go viral. It's the ones that seem to be incredibly genuine. Right. I agree 100%. And it's, it goes back to that, you know, the quote from Jamie Wong that I shared of, you know, because of the globalization um, and, of, and all the technology, I mean, people are wanting really, truly, they're craving authentic experiences. And if you're not authentic, then, you know, you might as well not even try. And, you know, and again, you know, those brand sacrifices that I was talking about, I mean, it's not just, you know, putting a nice coat of paint on something and saying, oh, look, this is new, bright, and shiny. It's got to be real and it's got to be meaningful. And I think what you share, Jamie, is absolutely spot on. It's it's got to come. It's got to, it, you know, you could almost say it's got to come from the heart to resonate with the consumer heart, right? Yeah, I, I think you know, interesting discussions we're having internally are around, um, you know, everybody being a bit sick to death of the word authentic, and that maybe if, right. you, if you use the word authentic, maybe you're not. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And no, exactly. Um, we're seeing that, you know, we're also seeing that, I mean, every, you can't pick up a magazine these days or read um, content about travel and it's not saying, you know, come see the off the beaten path or this is authentic. And, you know, it just makes me laugh because, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> It's pretty funny, you know. You're promoting off the beaten path. Well, you really can't stay off the beaten path for long if you if that's what you're promoting. Um, but it is it is as interesting, um, I think, opportunity to you know be real. We often say at our agency, uh, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. You know, everything else is taken. So you know, you've got to be yourself, um, no matter you know what your role is within, um, you know, the travel world. Yeah, this has been really useful. Thank you so much for, for sharing all this research with us. Absolutely. My pleasure. I, I, I have a lot of fun with this. It's, it's, it's my passion, so it's always great to dig in and share. And it was really fun for, for me to see um, what you all were seeing, that you were noticing different trends. Um, related to sustainability, and um, and then also too, I think the sharing of um, different sustainability-related information and sources is great too. And as I mentioned, um, I will work with Julie and Jeremy to share that with all of you, so you have that as a resource. Thank you. Great. Um, this is this has been really valuable. Is there are there any other comments or questions for McLaren? Very good. Well, Jeremy is recording this webinar so that we can share with all of you because I mean I'm I'm not sure that any of us could have taken notes very very quickly and those are some really really valuable slides and takeaways. So, um, and we'll share that with others within the networks that were unable to join us today, but. Um, 
again, any any other thoughts or questions before we we close? If not, thank you um, so much, McLaren. We we um, apologize for the anxiety that this caused you early on, and it's been this has been really valuable. So we really appreciate it. Oh no problem, and it was fun. And uh, sorry about the technical difficulties. If anyone has any questions, they can send me an email directly. Um, I have my contact information on the screen, and uh, love to hear from any of you. Oh, my Claire, and I just I, this is Kelly here from Planetara G Adventures. I just wanted to say that even though it started a bit late, you you speak very clearly, succinctly. Your everything was very relevant and. So it was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it was great. Um, not everyone's able to do that in a, in a presentation like this, so thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the feedback. I always appreciate it. Yeah, it's and fun McLaren, to do. If, McLaren, if it makes you feel any better, we had an STI board meeting once uh, on Madison Avenue, and um, a lot of people dialing in from all over the world, and we lost internet connection for an entire city block in Manhattan. So <laughs> um, I guess this stuff happens. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, it does. And it's so funny, Jeremy and I were so ready this morning. We got here, we got to our respective spaces early, you know, in the office and all prepared. I was live and boom. So anyway, thanks for all your patience and thanks for all your feedback. Really, uh, really great to connect with all of you. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Be well and we will um, send this out shortly. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. You too.